sustainability combined with modern technology, data protection from the first second, creativity is the creation of things. First was the idea. Thank you, thank you. Wow, what an amazing product. But wait a minute, actually, I've got to announce one more thing. <laughs> no, actually, there is no product to buy here, which gets an update in the next year, so you can throw away the old one. As you may have noticed, the video doorbell in the intro was not real, but this one actually is. It is the result of a one-man hobby project, because you can build it yourself quite easily and with materials accessible to everyone. And this means lifetime warranty, updates and upgrades, data protection and real sustainability, because you can repair almost everything so greenwashing is not necessary here. Greenwashing anyway is work for your hands, because I think there is no greenwashing machine, isn't it? So how did I make it? First I tested and programmed simple prototypes and then get to the design work in Blender. Therefore the animation in the intro was quite obvious. And then I built it. From materials that are available on every corner and built with tools that almost everyone has at home. Well, hey, 3D printer is certainly quite handy. And if you know someone who can cut stainless steel professionally, that's also quite helpful. And I'm a money saver because the cost of materials stays under 30 bucks. And how long do you work on it? <laughs> Shut up. If you follow this channel for a while, you may know my DIY smart home video from 2020, but because some things are already a bit dusty, there's a big update video coming soon. Or is it already there? Anyway, I already have a DIY doorbell in operation for a long time. And my friends and family usually think it's pretty cool. Of course, my mom says, oh, that's a great doorbell, sweetheart. But can it also be beautiful and cheaper than 500 bucks? And without every picture stored on an Amazon server? And maybe all integrated into one tablet on the wall? Sure, but then we have to do it ourselves. Because you may know as a smart home enthusiast that seemingly modern companies and uh, electricians just can't do better and often install proprietary systems such as this Jira system where an integration into open source software such as Home Assistant is pretty much impossible. I mean, why do even experts place a separate tablet right next to the video doorbell display instead of integrating everything? Seriously, you can do better than that. It doesn't take a genius to integrate your doorbell with Home Assistant and MotionEye, even on a cheap tablet. Hmm, but I guess you have to get something red for that huge amount of money, right? Maybe it's facial recognition? Hmm, but wait, I have that too. Anyway, enough mucking. How do you build such a ding dong? Since my first design is a bit special, I have made the design a bit more streamlined. The frame is made of stainless steel. Here you see the dimension and the shape. And the glass panel I use is from a picture glass, which is available in almost every store, at least here in Germany. Behind that is a printed window foil, which can be printed as you like. For movie fans, I'm afraid I can't open the door for you, Dave. Or the Find Waldo model. Find Waldo, press Waldo and it rings. I promise you, mail and food delivery guys will love it. But some can't even find the bell symbol on my version, so we uh, better keep it simple. Unfortunately, I have both sides printed the same, so the cutouts have become a bit messy because the mark not aligned perfectly over each other. I suggest you print the cutouts only on the back and then you can easily cut it out with a knife. In addition, the foil can contract by one to two millimeters in strong sunlight. So keep in mind to get a little larger foil and blow it dry gently with some heat when sticking. If you don't need letters and symbols, you also can just paint one side in black and tape the parts which shall be transparent. 
glue everything with silicone and you're done. Now to the techie part. To save a lot of time on soldering, I created boards with Easy EDA or alternatively KiCut and ordered them from jlcpcb.com. They are super cheap, have really good quality and the production and delivery takes only a few days. Secretly, I would have said that even without sponsoring. But if they ask me, so thank you for sponsoring this video to jlcpcb.com. The Bell uses a ESP32 camera module with a wide-angle camera, a 4x20 character display, a piezo buzzer for audio feedback, so you can program different ringtones, and also a Chinesium touch sensor. I guess the most parts are Chinesium, but they are cheap and they are good. Of course, you can get it more expensive and with longer delivery time from your How I make 500 bucks per day dropshipper of your choice. But I will try to find the right links for you and will post them on my blog. The touch sensor works behind glass and also through gloves. Rain or insects have not triggered a false alarm after three months of testing. Via a relay, the touch sensor can also trigger a chime if you have appropriate cables in the wall. But you can also transmit the ring signal via Wi-Fi and MQTT to Home Assistant and let, for example, ring your phones. The image is transmitted via Wi-Fi anyway. So that I get a photo immediately, like just when someone is ringing the bell, I transmit only a low resolution image from the moment of touch. Well, 1.3 megapixel is still more than my first camera phone had, but it's enough to recognize who's ringing. For face recognition, it's also enough. You can also record a video with motion eye, but the frame rate is not quite comparable with a action camera. But hey, five bucks for a camera. I have also tested different motion sensors, but neither PIR nor microwave radar work properly. Most of the time it triggers too often and if the sun shines on the infrared sensor, of course, anyway. But maybe it's due to the position because my 433 MHz PIR motion detector works great. Instructions are already on my channel, but only in German at this moment. In case of movement, which can also be detected by motion eye, you can for example activate the display, greet your guests, I display the time and temperature, you know, IoT stuff. It's really handy when messages are automatically displayed after the doorbell rings. For this purpose, I have built my own control panel in Home Assistant, via which I can select messages such as we are currently in the garden. Or I can activate the delivery mode so that my system opens the garage directly for the delivery guy so he can deposit the package there. It's also possible to open the door via face recognition, but since face recognition can be tricked very easily with a photo, you should always include a second factor, such as geofencing, for example. That means if you just came home, the opening by face is active for a few minutes. But anyway, the DIY door lock is subject for the next video. I programmed the ESP32 module with the Arduino IDE. And if I want to change something, I can update the firmware afterwards Tesla style over the air. This is also possible with ESP Home, which is also included in my smart home installation script. And for ESP Home are already many instructions on the internet. If you want to stay flexible like me, you should stick to the Arduino IDE. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I created the case with Blender. Fusion 360 isn't the right for me. I just can't do without Blender and of course it's open source. For all those who have a 3D printer or know someone, my models are on Thingiverse. I'm very satisfied with my Anycubic i3 Mega S, although as a full-blooded make I would or should probably take an original Prusa because I'm also using the Prusa slicer. For monitoring and control I use Octoprint on, of course, a Raspberry Pi with a Pi camera attached. As an experienced maker you probably already taken the picture frame of the wall and brushed the stainless steel. More details on the electronics and programming will come as soon as available, as usual, on the website and in the newsletter, where you also can get the smart home installation script. Of course, you can also connect with me and the rest of the community via Reddit, Discord or Telegram. But currently, the most of them are Germans. So thank you for watching this far. Has this video inspired you in any way? 
Do you want to build something your own? I can only say that this project was really fun and I'm really proud of this project and I now can say that I can build myself a video doorbell and every time I do something like this I learn something new, I get better and faster. If you want more like this think about supporting this project or at least share this video because popularity leads to attention and attention leads to something or at least a little something. The DIY door lock video is already in production. This is Felix, this is i23.com. Chicken or egg first was the idea. Remember, stay smart and stay independent.